Hey everybody. Okay. Uh, these sessions are amazing. They're going by so fast. Uh, I can't wait to watch them again when it's all over. So we have two types of speakers that we traditionally invite to MozCon. We've seen a lot of in industry veterans today, but we also like to invite the best new up and comers, get some fresh faces uh, in front of the MozCon audience. Our next speaker, Francine Rodriguez, is an expert in PPC, pay-per-click. She's working for WordStream. She is an awesome speaker and an all-around great human being. That's why we invited her here today for MozCon. And she's gonna be talking about automation, something that we can all have more of in our life and learn how to do better. So let's, uh, let's welcome Francine Rodriguez. Hi everyone, this is Francine Rodriguez. I'm a manager of customer success at WordStream. And today I'm here to talk to you about how to let it go, how to embrace automation and get way more done in your paid search campaigns. You know, right now, Life is tough and definitely we all need a break. So if today you just learn one thing to help you out, I've done my job. Now, it's no secret, 2020 has been a really tough year. For me, it started with being in a 6.4 earthquake in my home of Puerto Rico. And I thought that that was the biggest challenge I was gonna face this year. Clearly, I was incredibly wrong. Now, the world is a really overwhelming place right now, and a lot of things have been changing. History books are literally being written around all around us. So when it comes to digital marketing and our jobs, I don't know about you, I feel really overwhelmed and burned out. It is time to let some things go. And at this point, it's not just something that would be really, really nice. It feels more like a necessity. And that's totally okay. Look, managing change is not easy. You know, this is how I see my team and my family right now, and I'm sure that's the same for all of you. And as our support systems change, it's time for us to find some things where we can effectively let go without uh, sacrificing quality. So this is where my idea came from. You know, let the robot uprising begin. I'm so ready to let the machine take over. They don't get tired. They never sleep. They know all the secrets that we'll never do. So why not let them be in charge? And I know that a lot of people have heard about you know, horror stories with automation in the past, but here today, I'm gonna to present to you all the places where safely in PPC, you can let go and let the automation take over. So the first thing and the most important thing with Google Ads is that it all begins with an auction. So if it begins with an auction, that's how we get our foot in the door. We need to figure out a way to do this a lot smarter. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but out of all the bidding strategies available in paid search, I definitely see the scales tipping towards one side more than the other. You know, automated has been a really big deal and a really big push. All the new bidding strategies always end up to be more automated, but manual bidding still holds like a big part of a lot of PPCers hearts and it's considered the golden standard. And that's really interesting because when you look at the full spectrum, there's a lot of things that automated brings to the table, but manual still considers to be the top dog. Let's kind of break this down to understand why are we so attached to this? Well, the first thing with manual CPC that we all love and we can't ignore is that you get to control everything. You know, that is some awesome marketing superpower we didn't get into this role and into this industry if we don't love to control data. Obviously, that sounds amazing. And the next thing is that you, in terms of commitment effort, it's a lot of commitment effort. You know, I'm single in my 30s in a pandemic stuck inside. Commitment sounds really good right now. But I think this is that other type of commitment, the one where you have to hunker down over data and spend hours looking at information maybe that's not sounding so good right now. And the last thing is, you know, how, how do we describe the people who love manual CPC? They're the sophisticated advertiser who doesn't want to be described as top of their field, super knowledgeable and totally sophisticated. Obviously, this is why manual CPC is such an important part and such a beloved bidding strategy. But the reality of manual CPC is this. You now it's a lot of data that you have to comb through and you have to go keyword and bid and line by line looking at all the information and you have to go one by one by one 
by one. And this is a task that you have to do all the time. It is never ending. What you already just did, you have to check it again the next week and the week after that. It is time consuming. It is a lot. And in terms of tools that you have available for you, what do you have? We have things like the keyword bid simulator. This tool, what it does, it provides you, of, hey, this is where you are right now. And here's some suggestions and some forecasting of what you could do if you want to change or improve. In this customer's case, they were bidding $12 and getting about 13 clicks a day. Google went ahead and suggested, hey, change it to 85. You're gonna get a whomping two more clicks. You know, you guys, that doesn't sound so great and so awesome. And when you think about it, this is a 24 hour a day cycle, seven days a week. You're not only fighting against all the paid search engines, but your competitors as well. You know, this is beginning to be a hard pass for me and I'm gonna start looking at some other options. So come along with me and go take one big task off that to-do list because we don't have to be doing manual anymore. And if you don't wanna believe me, that's totally fine. How about you believe Google? Because right on the tool, they give you a warning saying, hey, if you are on manual bidding, you may see lower performance. On top of that, you could also be running um, out of budget faster and you could be losing impression share faster as well. So the negatives are starting to pile up and it's not just in the product and in the settings where you set these up. In the opportunities tab, all of the suggestions for this customer as well, as well were, hey, move to the different automated options. There's so much you could be saving and doing there. So the question begs, you know, which automated strategy is best? That's really difficult to answer because that really depends on your goals and where you are right now with your campaigns. So I'm gonna give you guys a really quick high level crash course on each one so you can understand their benefits and how they work. First, you have maximized clicks. And for me, that's like shooting a, a campaign out of a cannon. It's great for brand new campaigns, for people who can't get conversion tracking, or for people who are really struggling to jumpstart those campaigns. What's really good about this feature is that it also has a safety net that's called bid capping. And that way you can make sure that your budget just doesn't run wild. So definitely a great strategy to start off with. Next up, you have things like target impression share. This is location, location, location. I consider it a, like a step up. What's great about this one is that you get to decide, you know, I want to know which piece of the SERP I'm going to be showing up in. And I'm going to decide that this is how I'm going to be spending my budget. It also provides a safety net with a bid cap. But this is really pay to play you do need to have a little bit of a larger budget to make sure that you are appearing in the impression share in the location spot that you want to be. Then you have maximized conversions. I consider this one to be like the shiniest strategy and the one that has really big promises. With maximized conversions, it's basically telling you, hey, within the budget that you give me, I'm gonna get you as many conversions as possible obvious to state, but you, we should say it anyways, you do need to have accurate conversion da tracking data to have this one. And while you can start it off any campaign with this sort of strategy, even new ones, I always recommend making sure that you've done your stretches and you've done your workout a little bit before starting off. I usually tend to change uh, to this strategy when you have about 15 to 30 conversions in that campaign that you want to try it out in. Um, I wouldn't recommend it right off the start because it doesn't have any historical data to really, you know, go with. Then next up, you have target CPA. I consider this to be the glow up and one of those end strategies that you want to get to someday. Uh, this is great for the sophisticated marketer that has really accurate historical data that has a ton of conversions in their campaigns. What's great about this is that you get to set, this is how I want how much I want to pay for my acquisitions. But you need to have realistic goals. Like we all want a penny CPA or a dollar CPA, but that's just not the reality. So if you go way far off your goal, you're not gonna be successful with this one. 
And then finally, we have target ROAS. This is my angle strategy for my e-commerce folks. Same sort of thing as target CPA. A lot of historical data is important. You need to have accurate conversion value and conversions in the account. But once you get to this strategy, it really does perform awesome. And this is a really great strategy. If you are struggling, you can start it off at 100%, which basically tells Google, hey, break even for me on my return on investment. And then from there, you can build up. All right, so next up is ad copy. This is the only part of all the work that we do in Google that the customer gets to see. So we do need to spend a lot of time here and finding a way to uh, save time can be a little bit difficult, especially right now. We need to be over communicating to our customers and not just in paid ads, on our websites, blogs, social media, emails. We need to be telling the customer so much information so that they know what is our plan right now. If we're lost, so is the customer. They need to know, you know, have you changed to a virtual conference or are you offering virtual services? Is it contactless delivery or contactless pickup? Should I make a reservation or can I just walk in? This is all the information that the customer needs to know so that they can figure out, hey, can I do business with you right now? And as the world change, your plan is gonna be changed. The fastest way to communicate right now with your customers is using your ad copy. So which tool can you use right now? Then I highly recommend responsive search ads. Responsive search ads are a type of ad that you can find in Google where you provide you know, 15 different headlines, four different descriptions in one sitting. And then the tool is gonna to use machine learning technology to provide the best combination of the ad to the right customer in the right moment. What's really cool about this is that you're gonna get immediate data and you don't have to invest in A-B testing because the tool already does it for you. And what you wanna know is, hey, what are the pieces of ad copy that are people really responding to right now? And you can inform the rest of your digital marketing strategy on the information you get from these sorts of ads. And I almost forgot the most important part. If you give Google the biggest amount of headlines and descriptions, all those ad copy pieces, you can get up to 43,680 different possible variations of ads. Imagine trying to do that right now. That will be an impossible task. But sitting down, what, 20 minutes to create a couple different lines of ad copy is gonna generate these results for you. And I know there are a lot of folks who just can't let go. I have information for you as well. There's a tool in there called Pinning. And so if you have a piece of ad copy that's super important to you, you can use that little push pin icon to tell Google, I want this piece to be in this position always. Obviously this is gonna cut down on the amount of variations that you get, but you still get the control that you want. Now with using our saves, we at Wordstream have seen our customers get a click uplift from five to up to 15% when they have one RSA or responsive search ad per ad group. And remember this is about letting go. So we don't wanna go too crazy. The maximum amount you wanna do is three per ad group, no more than that. And yes, there is an equivalent for display ads. It's called responsive display ads. And this is really great for those people who don't have a graphic designer at hand and have an entry to barrier to go into these types of advertisements. And I, as I said, I have also tools for people who are just not quite ready to let go. Here you have Wordstream's free smart ad creator tool. What this tool does is you can add in a URL or different images and it will create in a few minutes a custom uh, group of ads for you in all the main sizes that you need. So feel free to check it out, wordstream.com slash smart ads creator. Next up, we have smart shopping campaigns. You know, right now during quarantine, I'm sure that you've been through this. I've been shopping a lot online and I probably shopped with and bought some things that maybe didn't make quite sense. You know, my worst quarantine uh, purchase has been a giant bag of marshmallows that come in Lucky Charms, but just the marshmallows. I don't think I needed that, but it made me feel happy and I treated myself. And I know a lot of you are also treating yourself. So 
this is a super important strategy for us to be thinking about. What are we going to do about all these people shopping online? And you don't have to believe me once again. Here we have Shopify CTO, where they shared that during COVID-19, their uh, shopping platform saw Black Friday levels of traffic every single day. That is a lot. E-commerce really has become the king right now. So important. So what tools are there available to, to help us break into these campaigns and save time? You got your smart shopping campaigns. So with this campaign type, the Smart Shopping Ads campaign, you can create one campaign and automatically get ads in Search, Display, YouTube, and Gmail. It is awesome. To set it up, it's super duper simple. You only need to have three requirements. The first one being e-commerce conversion value tracking. The second being remarketing because it also automatically does that for you and you just need 100 minimum active users. And the third is having an active Google Merchant Center fee. So great new shoppers, this campaign strategy is awesome. It typically performs really, really well, and you can set up a target ROAS bidding strategy with them. You can also subdivide your products so you can have a lot of organization, and you can and should exclude those products that are not performing well or that you just don't wanna advertise for. There is a downside to this. You unfortunately cannot add any negative keywords and you cannot see the search query. So it is truly running on its own. And if you change your budget a lot, it can reset that learning period. So with smart shopping campaigns, you wanna set it up and really you kinda of wanna let it go. You don't wanna to tweak too much in there, both positive and negative. I certainly recommend this for people who are having a really tough time with shopping campaigns right now, or that you're in a really competitive industry, or you have a really large inventory that, that changes all the time, these campaigns were built exactly to help you. But there are some things you definitely should stay away from. First of all, if you have products that are advertising in smart campaign and in regular standard campaigns, don't do that. First of all, you're overworking yourself. And long story short, those uh, smart shopping campaigns kind of always win over the regular ones when you have the same products in both. So you definitely want to separate those out. And my last piece of advice, if it's not Baroque, don't fix it. We definitely don't want to be tweaking too much with our smart campaigns. As I said, the good thing about it is you let it go, but you shouldn't be changing too much. So if things are working, just let it be, all right? And I know that paying for ads can be really, really difficult for some folks. So I wanted to make sure you guys know this. In April, 2020, Google recently announced that um, anyone who had a Google Merchant Center, Google Merchant Center feed could advertise for free on the shopping tab of Google SERP. So definitely take advantage of this. All you have to do is just set up your account. You are automatically enter to win free ads. <laughs> Next up, we have our keywords. This is a place where SEO and PPC meet, but this is a, one of also the places that we can save a lot of time. So using this, the oldest infographic in the industry, I wanna talk a little bit about keyword match types. Uh, and the first thing I'll say is, I'm gonna make a slightly controversial statement. So please, hold on to your pajama bottoms that you're probably wearing right now and do not panic by toilet paper, there will be no need. We'll get through this. I believe that match types are dead and I'm so sorry to be breaking this news right now for everyone. The match types that we used to know, they had very specific rules, they, they had they were different from each other. They, they served a place in context of time. Now, Google has been making a lot of changes to our match types and the lines have completely blurred. So I'm gonna give you an example of what I mean. In this uh, picture here, I know it's a lot. You're gonna see the search report for just one keyword. That keyword was vacation packages Yellowstone on modified broad. 
Now, there were 42 queries attached to this keyword, but only three of the 42 followed the rule of modified broad, which is the most simple one of all. Anything with a plus sign, that word has to appear in the search query. Again, three out of 42 followed the rules. That's a big change. So kind of what's going on? Why are we making all these changes? I'm going to introduce to you what the new match types are. They basically have the same name and they're a little bit confusing because they are not following any of the rules. Right now, you can add in function words, which are things like in and the, uh, the words can be totally reordered, which breaks some of the major rules of some of our match types. And words can be paraphrased. Or we can add things that, hey, had the same intent or things that were implied to a, be in the word. And one of my favorites, close variants. It can be plural, it can be singular, it can be any sort of misspelling of that keyword. You know, kind of what's going on? This is really breaking all the rules of what these match types used to be. Well, the match types were doing, I think, too good of a job of restricting themselves and putting them in a box. And what Google realized is by letting the rules kind of flow, customers could get 3% more click-through rate with addition in traffic. And at Warstream, we did a little bit of an experiment. We looked at exact match keywords across tons of accounts. And what we noticed is, okay, we wanna know how does these new rules impact the existing keywords that we have. We found that 18% of the exact match keywords across our accounts would be considered duplicates now, meaning that almost 20% of our keywords we didn't need to have. And we were spending time adding them in when we were gonna get those clicks anyways. And the other fact that we found is that 41% of exact match keyword spend was impacted um, in terms that today Google would consider duplicates. So again, we were doing a ton of work for stuff that we we're gonna get anyways. So I know we all know this, but Google handles 3.5 billion of searches a day. 15% of those searches have never been seen before. And then when we think about Microsoft ads, 20% of those searches have never been seen before. What it all comes down to is that if you go super restrictive, we were missing out on those new trends. So that's kind of where we're at now. We're making sure that we're getting as many clicks as possible. But I've kind of left you guys out with one big question. So what match type do we pick? I don't know, <laughs> you know, the, this is the funny part. We, I created a really de heated debate in the office trying to answer this question. Most of us, I would say over 80% of us at the company decided between modified broad and phrase match, those are the ones that we're going to. But 100% of us decided that the main thing that you need to take out of today is that using all four is not necessary anymore. You really can only stick to one and do a really great job with it. So match type strategy is something that we need to get away from our lives forever. And with match type strategy, we also have to say a farewell and thank you for your service to some different types of strategies also attached to match types. So single keyword ad groups, also known as SCAGs, you were really great when manual CPC was king and when match types did what they said they did. But in this point of time, you really make no sense. You actually give us more work when match types are doing whatever they want anyway. So we were gonna get all those clicks anyways. And also campaigns structured by match types, I'll admit you were never my favorite and I'm really happy to see you go because you made me duplicate all my work. So goodbye to you forever as well, my friend. Ride into the sunset. But without match types, what I think we do need to concentrate is that the future is audiences. Um, I think that campaigns, let's compare them to a burger. You know, the campaign is gonna be the bun, they're gonna hold it together, they're gonna make sure that we're not gonna get away from our settings. And the keywords are gonna be that juicy, meaty patty. They're gonna help us make sure that it's giving meat to the account. But the audiences are gonna be the condiment. Those are things like remarketing, demographics, in-market audiences, affinity audience. Those are the things that are gonna help us get to the next step and give us some better control. 
So before we were really obsessed with kind of the order of the words that people were typing in in the SERP. And the lesson here is we don't need to be obsessed with what word they put first, second, or in between. What we need to be concentrating is how they are searching online, what they're searching online, and how are they a consumer. And that's where audiences are going to come in. By marrying keywords and audiences, instead of marrying keywords and match types, we're going to have a better combination to get a juicier burger for our campaigns. And if there is someone who can teach us how to let it go, it is the artist formerly known as Bing, our friends, Microsoft Ads. They have the ultimate tool for letting go, and that is their import tool. And yeah, I know this is not new or revolutionary, but this tool is awesome. It helps you import quickly all their campaigns from Google, and you can actually schedule imports weekly or daily whenever you want. So we need to be taking advantage of this to make sure that we are not duplicating our work and saving a ton of time. But what's really important about Microsoft Ads is actually this. When WordStream was looking at how our ad traffic was impacted by COVID-19, in the month of March, we noticed that you know, Google took a big hit. Our traffic changed about 20% less. But when we looked at Bing, surprising, only 5%. They're you know, not bad during the worst time of our industry. And then when we looked at the data again in April, you know, Google search kind of had recovered, which is nice to see. But Bing was almost, again, at the same level, they were very agnostic to change. So if you want to let go, make sure you're investing in a safe network that's not gonna have these big swings, Bing is the place. If during COVID-19, they were pretty normal in their traffic, I'm pretty sure they can survive anything. And one thing I definitely wanna point out in this graph, I don't know if you noticed, but shopping before had negative 15 and the month later, they were up 40%. So do not sleep on shopping. As I said, super important. And I can't leave you without a little bit of a bonus. Uh, it's Google Ad Scripts. These provide a way for you to programmatically control your Google Ads using simple JavaScript to automate common procedures that you would do in Google. So this is basically like a cheat code for marketers. And I'll say this, I will never claim to be a scripts specialist, but uh, that search guy Nils definitely is in his blog, which I have linked to here and you can find him on Twitter as well. He has a running list of 250 different Google ad scripts for anything and everything. So if you need more ideas on how to automate your account, go right there. You're gonna have 250 plus ones. So you guys, we've done it. We've learned of all the places that we can automate and let it go. So what are we gonna do with all this free time? Initially, I was gonna invite you all to come with me to a tour of the top of the world. But right now, I've had a lot of quarantine snacks making this presentation, like way too many. So I'm gonna go take a walk and maybe do some crunches with my cat over here. So muchas, muchas gracias, Miles Khan. I really appreciate your time. Stay resilient, keep moving forward, and please let some things go. And I'm happy now to answer any questions. <laughs>